Hello. So today, let's go ahead and make ourselves a, an encounter. Instead of these guys just spawning when the, when the scene starts, let's put them underneath in this uh, dark area where, where slimes would conceivably be. Like so. That seems fine to me. Yeah, that'll work. Now, if we just leave them like this, then they will actually try to hunt us down even as we just spawn in. They'll start to rush at us way, way over here. But we don't want that to happen. What we'd really like to happen is we'd like for them to only activate when we get within range. And there's a couple of other things we'd like to do in the long run, like have an encounter sheet that spawns in... Oh, did I screw that up? I moved our body, but not our character. Sorry, that was not exactly brilliant. Let's try that again. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to make it so that they only trigger when they quote-unquote see us. We're not actually going to use any kind of line of sight stuff. We're just going to use uh, a triggering surrounding. So basically they won't walk towards us like this unless we get close enough for uh, them to detect us. And the way we're going to do that is we'll just select all of these guys and turn off their AI. So with their AI off they won't be doing anything but they'll still be animated and they'll still have physics so they'll just kind of sit there. And what we will do is we will create a new object. So game object create empty and we will call this uh, an encounter trigger. Now the encounter trigger we'll put next to these slimes, and the easiest way to do that is to drop it onto the slime and set its position to 0, 0, 0, and then take it off of the slime like this. And we'll just create ourselves a box around this so that it uh, has a certain kind of size to it. So if we have a box collider, We'll say it's a trigger, and we'll make it, um, let's say, 50 by 50, oh, no, it's 50 by 5 by 50, like this. And you can see how that kind of surrounds our, our little castle here. Uh, it's not in the same orientation as our castle. We can go ahead and rotate it if we'd like. Not a big deal. And we can also move it and resize it to our heart's consent. Now, when you click on this, you'll notice how this does not give you the option to drag and drop uh, uh, these, these green areas, which is a shame. So when you want to resize it, you're going to have to probably type in manual uh, numbers. Uh, so uh, kind of disappointing, but I guess it's OK. There we go. And so now we've got an encounter that is roughly the same size and shape as our setting, like so. And that means that they will only trigger, well, we haven't hooked that part up yet. We, basically, we only want them to come into uh, their own when we cross this line and we trigger here. So what are we going to do? How are we going to make that happen? Well, we need to have a new script. So we're going to call this a simple trigger script. And we're definitely going to want to drop it on the encounter trigger object and open it up in our favorite developer. Okay, so the idea here is that we have void on trigger. I think that's how it is. No, it's actually more complicated, isn't it? I should have looked this up beforehand. Hold on a second. Just look it up on Google. Unity trigger enter uh, on trigger enter. Yep with a capital O as well. And then we get it past a collider, like so. And we're going to want to have an event. Public unity event on trigger. Easy enough, right? And then here we say if collider.tag equals player, then on trigger dot uh, invoke. So just to take a double look here, 
we are in fact tagged as the player, so that should be fine. But just to make sure that we understand what's happening, we will say else debug.log the plus collider dot name is not a player. Easy enough. So when we go up to the encounter trigger, you can see that we now have a Unity event. And what we can do is we can add in four of these buttons. We're just going to start with one for now. Um, and we can take these slimes here. Let's just delete three of these because they're extraneous. And this last one here will be the one that we care about. And we're just going to go ahead and drop him in here. And then we're going to take his mob AI and we're just going to turn it on like so. So let's go ahead and keep that guy selected. So if I pause here and then I go over to find the slime, you can see that the mob AI is turned off. And we'll just keep an eye on that as we walk into the collider. And there it turned on. So that's one way to do these kinds of events. And this is going to be the simplest kind of trigger you can build. And it's super, super flexible. Um, basically, anytime the player enters this trigger, we can have it do something. And we can actually expand it a little bit here by going over here and creating an on trigger exit. And doing the same thing. But we're going to go ahead and delete this line because we don't need it. And we'll go ahead and rearrange these so that they're a little bit more um, obvious. So now they match the exact terminology inside of Unity. But you don't have to if you don't want to. We can also change it so that we have this tag being something we can specify. So we could have, you know, public string required tag of triggerer or whatever. Um, but we're not going to do that because for now it's always going to be the player that causes our triggers to happen. If we need it to have more flexibility later on, we can do that. This is not a complicated system, and there's no reason to make it complicated unless we have to. But, you know, I think it would be nice if these slimes kind of just popped into existence rather than sitting here and taking up our physics and rendering resources uh, when they're too far away and deactivated. So, um, you know what, let's go ahead and just delete this slime. We don't need him. Don't need him. And over here in the encounter trigger, what we'll do is we will add a new event for on trigger enter. And let's go ahead and drop a monster in. Nope, not that monster. This monster. So we've just dropped a prefab called Slimin. And we can actually see that there are a number of things we can choose to do. But what we actually need to do isn't yet an event. Uh, here in battle unit, we want to be able to spawn this mob. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over into scripts and open up our battle unit script and add an important piece of functionality. Open. We're going to create a new function. We could call it instantiate, but that's a reserved keyword. So instead we're going to call it spawn. Uh, now, we have a lot of options here. We can pass it in various values as we would prefer, all that stuff. We're not actually going to bother. Instead, all we're going to do is uh, allow it to take in a transform for its position. We could allow it to do a couple of other things if we would like, but in this case, I think that all we need is the transform. Uh, the reason we're taking in a transform is because it's actually easier to pass a transform than a vector 3, and I'll show you why in a second. So spawn, and uh, this will be um, uh, game uh, or uh, instantiate game object like so, and that's all we need to do. But we do need to actually set this to be um, something that uh, knows what it is and then can set its own position. So we're going to say uh, uh, game object new enemy equals game object instantiate game object. Now the reason that the capital G and the lowercase g matter is because this is a class and this is an instance. Specifically this game object is the one that we are attached to. So we're saying okay well we're part of a game object let's grab this game object and let's create an instance of it in the world. Of course we do want to make sure that that instance is in the right spot. Like so. Pretty easy, right? 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back to our encounter trigger and set this up properly. So, oh, well that's that part's correct. This part, we want to go to the battle unit and we want to create... Oh, but look, it's not here because I didn't do it right. Of course I didn't do it right. I'm not very bright. There. Sorry about that. Let's try that again, shall we? And now it's asking us what kind of transform we want to pass it. And for that, we can just drag our own transform onto it. See? And this is a really easy way to create um, in monster encounters. And if we had multiple monsters, we could either create a system that offsets it by some amount or creates a formation, or we could just put down some slots, a couple of empty enemy triggers, or a couple of empty locations, like inside of this game, inside of this trigger. We could have one here, and then we could have one over here. And then we could say, okay, we'll pass it this. And then for the next one, same idea. But pass it the other game object. And we can call these slot 1 and slot 2. And now you can see we'll be creating two of these guys, right? Well, let's go ahead and see what happens when we actually try it. They should pop up at the bottom of the screen. Yep, they popped up at the top. That's fine. So you can see that it created the slimes no problem, and they react just fine to getting hit. And this is the core of what we're going to do uh, for creating our encounters. This is how encounters are going to go. But encounters are going to be a little bit more complex than that, as you might have guessed. Also, it's really dark in here, um, and uh, we may need to do something about that. You bit me, jerk. Anyhow, that's it for today.